Hi, Jim. Uh, welcome again to this uh, second video of our, you know, infrastructure as a code um, Terraform series. Um, following last video, uh, we looked at uh, the concept of infrastructure as a code. Um, we were able to to install Terraform on on our servers, Terraform both on our Windows server, and we were also able to install Terraform on, on our um, uh, Red Hat server in AWS. So today we will pick up from, from where we, we left. I hope that you, you are also able to configure your, your VS code or your development environment, because today what, what we are going to move on is we're going to go into chapter two, where we will look at the Terraform workflow. This is what we're calling the command basics. So I'll just go ahead and share my screen. Share my screen. All right. So when last, following last, uh, um, Maybe we looked at the introduction in terms of, in terms of uh, just the ter key concepts. Uh, we looked at the introduction of what infrastructure as a code is. We were able to look at some of the benefits, benefits that Terraform, Terraform offers, and uh, we equally looked at like what Terraform is and the configuration files. So, in terms of configuration files, which is something that we're going to to look at length today. Uh, so we, we covered a lot. We, we, we were able to, to install Terraform. And we say that uh, some of the prerequisites for you to, to be able to install Terraform is first you need to download the Terraform binary, which we did. And we have uh, the links of where you can get the binary right here. You can either uh, download and unzip it if you're using a Mac. Then we also saw how you're able to install your AWS CLI because the CLI is like the interface. This is what is going to help you to, to communicate with AWS, Terraform to communicate with AWS. And we say that for Terraform installed on your server or on your Windows computer or your Mac, for it to communicate with AWS, you'll need credentials. And we saw how we are able to configure credentials. Uh, we say that if you have a server that is running in AWS, then we, we will configure a role and we were able to, to create a role and attach to a server. So I'll quickly show you, show you what, what we did last week. And then, so we Terraform running, we Terraform running, uh, you, you, had your access key or you've configured you've configured your environment as, as we saw last last time so with that said today we're going to move into into chapter two of uh, which we are calling the command basics whereby we are going to look at the terraform workflow how does terraform work now that i have my binary installed so what next what do i need to do so before we do that we will go back to, to our Visual Studio code. And we say this is the tool that we're going to use. This is our, our ID of choice that we're going to use to, to install Terraform. Now, what we're going to do is uh, uh, we are going to, to, to use Terraform. First, I will show you how we can, we can use our Linux server we can use our Red Hat server that we installed, how we can configure it so that we use Terraform, Terraform um, um, basically from that. So what we need to do, we can go back to our, our AWS. If I go back to my AWS, AWS, I have, this is the server, the Terraform server that we installed. So all I need is to copy the, IP address. I, I need the IP address of this particular server, which is which is the public IP address. So I can just copy that IP address. 
<coughs> uh, can use control C. <coughs> so after I copy that IP address, IP address now on this VS code. So I'm going to configure my remote development. Now, if you watch the, the video that I made about how to configure your VS code, so you should know that when we, we, we are trying to configure our remote development on this, what we need to do is click, click on this upper button right here to open the remote window. So once we click, first we need to configure it, right? So we have our remote SSH plugin. We, when you need to install the remote SSH plugin. So if you go to plugins right here and search for remote SSH, this is the plugin that you, you are to install. So once this plugin is installed, then if you come and click on this, it is going to open a remote SSH window for you right here. So what, what we want to do first is we want to configure, right? To want to configure. So we will open SSH configuration file. And then where is this SSH? Because I'm on my Windows, my Windows computer, this SSH, it uh, plug in the config file is in the users 26, this dot SSH config. So I'm gonna open that. And then with this, it is going to open for you. This is the config file. I had already configured some, some other servers in there, but this is, this is a basic configuration file that, that it gives you. So what, what you need to do is, now I, I just copied, I just copied my, my, my IP address for this server. So with that IP address copied, so what I will do is that I will come and I can create, I can copy this or I can just update. I can just update, okay, let me paste that, that IP here first. So I can copy this. In, in your case, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have this many, many configurations already, already in there. But for my case, because I, I had configured some servers already, so I can just create another entry. So what you need to do is now the host, this is just an alias. This is just like a name, a name that you can give, a name that you can give to your server. Now, this is my Terraform server. So I can just give it, give it that name. So my host, Right here is Terraform, Terraform server, right? So that's my, my Terraform server. IP address is, this is the IP that I, that, that I copied. So this is the host name. I put there my IP address, that is it. And then it is a, a Red Hat server. So the default user, is EC2 user, right? And the identity file, this is the key, the key that you are using, you will use to connect your server. So this key is found in my downloads, in the home in downloads, and the key is automation1.pam. This is the key that we passed, we passed on, on our server, right? This is the key that we passed on our server. This is the public key that is left automation. But now I have, this private key. So now with that, with that configured, uh, you will just save it. Okay, I'll go back to my file. You will just save it. And um, once once everything is saved, it's actually auto saved. Then I can close that that configuration file. Okay. And then now click on it again and now go to connect to host. So I want to connect to that. Now you see my the host has been populated. I want to connect to my Terraform server. So I will click on that on that Terraform server. Once I, I click on it, it is now opening a remote. It is opening a new window remote. And then it will tell you to select the platform. 
select the platform with the remote host. It, is it a Linux, a Windows or Mac OS? So it is a Linux. So I click on Linux. Then it, it tells me, are you sure you want to continue? So you just click on continue. Yes. So once you click on continue, then it's making an SSH connection to that server. So right now it looks like, like it has connected SSH Terraform server. So it shows you that it has it has connected you to the to the server. So if I minimize this window and and open this, open that window like that. So now it has connected me to my to my uh, to my Terraform server in EC2, and this is the IP address, right? So now, right now, I'm inside of my, my Terraform server on AWS. So now, right here, what I can do is I can start my remote development. Right now, if I, if I do LS, basically, I just have my AWS config file, and I also downloaded the, the AWS CLI. Right, and this particular server, as we say, I attach a role to it. So if I run, if I run AWS S3 LS, right, S3 LS, you see it is it is able to to list the buckets, the buckets that I that I have in in my in my account. So now with this, now I have configured. I have been able to configure the remote development whereby I now have my server here. So with this, what now I wanna do, I wanna do is first, I wanna create create a, a directory. So because this is remote, what I can do is that I can make directory, right? I can make a directory and I just call it Terraform, Terraform projects, right? Terraform project. Now I can LS, LS into Terraform, Terraform project. So right now I'm, I'm inside of, inside if I do PWD, I'm inside of my, my, okay, I need to CD, sorry, I need to CD, CD into Terraform, not LS, Terraform project. So right now, if I'm inside of my, my, my Terraform project, right? So now with that, I can now open my VS code inside of this directory. So how do I do that? I'll do code, right? Dot, like open my VS code inside of that directory. So once I enter, it is going now to open, to open another window, right? It is going to open another window. I'm gonna ask me, do you trust, right? Yes, trust the authors. So I can close that. And now with this, what I will do again, I will just minimize that. So now I've opened my, my code my code inside of this, this particular directory. So let me place this one here first. Let me snap it to a window right there. Let me move it here. And let me maximize it. <clears throat> okay, so if, if now I, I look at my terminal. If I go to my terminal, I'm inside of this, this project. And right here, I'm inside of the Terraform project folder. So now with this, therefore, I can start doing what? I can start, I can start creating, creating, creating a, uh, my manifest file, right? Now, this, now I've set up this environment and now I'm ready to start writing writing my, my Terraform code. Now, before we do that, before we do that, so 
when we look at uh, at uh, Terraform, and in terms of the, the command basics, in terms of the workflow, now, we need to know to have an understanding of like the configuration files, how we write Terraform configuration file. So Terraform, it uses declarative syntax to describe the infrastructure as a code, right? Right, uh, infrastructure as a code, and then persist it in configuration files that can be shared, reviewed, edited, version or provision. So the Terraform configuration files can either be in two formats. So you can write it, in a language which we call HCL, that is the Hashiko configuration language, which is recommended, right? Or you can write it in JSON format. So when, when you write this, configuration files that are written in HCL format, they will end with .tf. So any Terraform configuration file that we will write, it will end with this extension .tf. So a .tf file is a Terraform file. But when you write one that ends with a .tf.json file, this is a JSON in JSON format, but JSON files, these are machine readable. They are, they are, they are specifically meant for, for machines, for computers. But for human readability, we will write files that end with a .tf file, right? So how do we write uh, Terraform files. Now, if you go to, to, to the registry, let's say we want to create, when we were in, a, uh, let me go back to my, my AWS. In my AWS, let's say we want to launch an instance. We want to launch an EC2 instance. So once we go on launch, we want to launch an instance. The first thing that we need to choose, what is required is, you have to choose your AMI. This is your Amazon machine image. And what are we creating? We are creating an Amazon uh, like resource, but this resource in Amazon, it is called an instance, right? We are creating an instance. So the language that we will tell Terraform is we want to create an AWS instance, right? an AWS instance, this is what we want to create. Now, one of the requirements is that for you to create an AWS instance, you will need to create, you will need to select an AMI, an AMI. Then the second thing, once, once we select an AMI, let's say we are selecting this AMI. So basically what we are selecting is this ID. We are selecting this AMI ID. We are saying that we, we are going to create an, an instance whose machine image, whose operating system is, is, has this ID, okay? So we can select that. Then the second thing that we will be required to do, we will be required to do is we have to select the instant type, the type. Now the type here, it has to do with the family, it has to do with the, with the size of the operating system, how many V, PCUs, what is the size of the memory and all that. So based on the type that you choose, then your instance will be configured to, to, to suit that. So these are the two requirements. So once you, if I select that two, T2 medium, um, now right here with that selection, I can review and launch because those are the only two requirements that I need to, to create an instance. But if I go further, now you see here, I'm now configuring it. Now, all these are now optional because I could leave it, leave it as default. I can just have the AMI, uh, AMI and the instant type and I can create an instance with everything else left as default, right? Everything else left as default. So now in Terraform, all these other things are optional. There are optional things that you can add on because from here, even without me selecting, I can launch I can review and launch an instance. I can create an instance from here. Then everything else, security groups, uh, all these storage, all these things, they, they, they are basically default that have been pre-selected for me. So now when we go, if we go now back to, to a Terraform, so what you can do is 
go online, once you go on Google, and let's say we want to create an EC2 instance. So you type Terraform, Terraform, EC2 instance example, okay? EC2 instance example. So you will see AWS instance, right? AWS instance. And now this is a resource. We are creating a resource. We are creating an AWS instance, a resource. So you've, if you open it, it will bring you to the, to the registry, Terraform registry. Now here, the resource type that we want to create it is an AWS underscore instance. So this is the naming convention. Since we are dealing with AWS, or every resource that you create in AWS, the naming convention, it will start with this AWS. This is your provider. It will start with AWS, then underscore, then the type, the type of, of, of the resource that 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 you are you you are creating right so this is aws underscore instance then it will give you an example like now we are looking at at uh, at an instance so we look for aws underscore instance all this is data Interface AWS instance. So AWS instance, I see it, I see it like right here, AWS instance. So I can copy this, copy this, just the AWS instance, right? I can copy that. Copy that and, and basically go to my here. I can create, let me create a file. Now this file, let me call it, call it ec2.tf. It's a Terraform with the TF extension. Once you do a TF, it sends that this is a Terraform file. So if I make an entry, it is going now to open my TF right here. So I can copy, I can paste that resource right here. So you see, I'm creating a resource. It is an AWS underscore instance. This is the resource type, right? And then this right here, it is now the name, the name that I will call the instance. Let me say this instance, I wanna call it my my underscore demo demo ec2 right this is just the name that i'm giving the instance so this is the instant the resource type and this is the resource name okay and then what i have here is the ami ami id now this ami id we know that when you want to create create an um, an instance, you need an AMI. So for you to get this this AMI, the AMI is region specific. So let me go back to my my AWS, and I go to launch instance. Let's say I want to launch a a Red Hat server, right? A Red Hat server or or Ubuntu. Ubuntu. So I can copy this AMI. I can copy this AMI. And this AMI, it is in which region? It is in US West 1. US West 1, because AMIs are region specific. So US West 1. So I can go back to, to my, my resource and I'll just update this AMI. Right, because the AMI that was there was for US West 2. So now this one is for US West 1 and it's for Ubuntu. Then what is the instant type? The instant type is a T2 micro, okay? So now this is a Terraform file, right? 
this is a Terraform file. But I need to tell Terraform, like Terraform doesn't know, because as we say, Terraform is, is, is um, cloud agnostic. You need to tell Terraform like which cloud you're pro provisioning your infrastructure. In. So now for that, we have what you call a provider, right? You have what you call a provider. So you put a provider, who is your provider? Now for, for provider, if I go on, on uh, back on, on my site, let me just say Terraform, Terraform, provider, provider, right? Example. So if I go here, you look at provider configuration, the Terraform, right? Now, the provider, the provider configuration is created using a provider block. We will go through all this, all this block. So I can copy this. This is my, my provider block. I can copy this and go back to my code. Okay, and just paste it. Now, this provider, it tells you what cloud you're pro provisioning in, right? So I can say I'm provisioning my provider is AWS. And then it is a map. We have these calibrations, right? And then you are provisioning. If you want to put a project name, you can put a project name in there. But for right now, we don't need we don't need a project name, right? So, which region are we provision provisioning? This AMI is for US West One. So our region is US US West one right that is our region so we've put we've put that 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 is our region now apart from that this provider so now we are telling telephone we want to to provision resources in aws and which region are we provisioning we are provisioning it in us west one now because we are provisioning in aws we need credentials right you need credentials. But this server, we already have a role that has been attached to it. So with this, we can, we can initialize uh, once the file, file is saved, right? Once the file is, is saved. So if I ls, if I ls right here, I have one configuration file, all right? I have one configuration file. Now, once you have your configuration file set, set up, now we will start what we call the Terraform workflow. Now with the configuration file, file set up, so the first thing you need to do is to run Terraform init. Like you need to initialize the files. Now, initializing the file, it is used to initialize a working directory containing Terraform config files. So this is the first command that should be run after writing a new Terraform configuration file. And then when you do that, it downloads providers and modules, okay? It is going to download to download your providers, providers and modules. So what we do, we're going to run Terraform init, right? We're going to run Terraform, Terraform init. So if I go here, and I run Terraform, Terraform init, Terraform command not found. Okay, let me see. Terraform. We reinstall Terraform, okay. Oh, what I was doing wrong. I passed it as a copy. So we need to run Terraform, Terraform init. So once you run Terraform init, right, it is going to check to check the configuration. But as you can see, 
it says there is a Terraform configuration must be valid before initializing so that Terraform can determine which models and providers need to be installed. So here it is actually telling you if you have an error, it is reading through your configuration file and telling you that, hey, there is, there is a problem. And what is the error? It is an closed configuration block. So this Terraform resource, uh, basically it has these two labels, but I have a curly bracket here. This is my block. So I need to close, I need to close this. I need to close this block because all the, this, this is a map of, 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 of arguments, arguments, uh, basically arguments that have been mapped inside of this resource. So now I um, want to create a resource, but when Terraform scans through my file, it found this, this error. So it's saying, okay, there is, there is an error to that. So now with that corrected, it's auto saved. So now I can run Terraform in it. So once I initialize, it is initializing the backend. Then what, what does it do? It downloads, it initializes the backend, it finds the latest version of HashiCorp AWS because it is downloading from, from HashiCorp. It is installing your AWS uh, plugin, right? So Terraform has created a log file to record the provider selections made above. So then it tells you Terraform has been successfully initialized. So now with this, we've initialized our, our directory. Now, when we initialize, what happened in this particular directory, we only had, had our ec2.tf, but once you run initialize, it downloads for you another directory here, which is a dot Terraform, a hidden directory, right? So if we, if we open that, that directory, we see that it has downloaded providers, right? It has downloaded your providers. Now this provider, it has downloaded, the provider that it has, it has downloaded is AWS. Why? How did it, how did it download that? Because we, we created a provider. We say that our provider is AWS. Now, if you go on onto the registry, which are calling the Terraform registry. If I go onto, onto the registry, if I just go Terraform registry, you will have providers and you will have modules. All these things we will go through. So when you look at providers, these are, these are like all the providers, all the providers that, that <clears throat> you can create resources, resources in, right? These are like, like all the providers. Now with us, we selected AWS as our provider. So if we click on, on AWS as our provider, right? So what Terraform is doing, once we, we say that AWS is our provider, Terraform is going, is downloading this module, HashiCorp Terraform Provider, AWS, right? So it is downloading this source code, right? It is downloading all this, all this. This is the code that runs, runs AWS provider. It is your, the interface, the code that has been created to interface between HashiCorp and, and, uh, and, and AWS, right? So this is your, the code for your AWS provider uh, that HashiCorp recognizes. So once you initialize, what it's doing is it is downloading, it is downloading this provider, right? It is downloading that provider. So with that said, once you once you once you initialize, once you initialize your your once you initialize your 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 directory, now the second thing is you run Terraform validate. Now, what does validate do? Validate, it basically validates the configuration files in the respective directory to ensure that they are syntactically valid and internally consistent, right? So once, since we, we've, we've already initialized, initialized our, our, our directory, so 
what we can do is now go and validate. Uh, sorry, it's reconnecting. It's still reconnecting. Okay, I don't know what happened. It's still reconnecting. So as as it still runs runs that. So the second command, as we said, with when you validate, you are basically looking at the con configuration files, how syntactically uh, accurate are they. And then after that, we will run Terraform plan. So this is in terms of the workflow. We do a Terraform plan. So Terraform plan, it will create an execution plan. Terraform performs a refresh and determines what actions are necessary to achieve the desired step specified in the configuration file, right? So we, once we validate, then we can run a plan. Let's see if it's, if it's connected. Still connecting. So as this this continues to to set up the SSH, I don't know there was there was a disconnect that happened. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna just jump jump into my Windows. I'm gonna run run Terraform from my Windows environment because you basically uh, also need to experience this, and this is what we'll do. So right now I'm in the Terraform series uh, uh, directory. So right here. I can do the same thing. I can create an EC2, EC2.tf TF, uh, uh, directory or file rather. Then right here, I had my provider, my provider, right? And um, now this is where the extension comes in. Once you type provider, it's gonna give you suggestions, right? So I have my provider and my provider here is, AWS. So then we had uh, curly brackets, right? And then inside of the provider block, we had we had the the region. We had the region. Enter region was, uh, and it tells you the region is a string. So we're gonna put the region as US. West, West one. That was that was our region inside inside of, of our provider. Then we had our resource. We had our resource. Resource. It's a block, or rather, it's a resource. Let me use the extension. So we had put our resource, a resource block, and you enter. So our resource name. Our resource name, it was AWS underscore instance, right? And you can, if you scroll down, you can you can find it there, right? AWS underscore instance. That is that is our resource name. And then the uh, that is the resource type. And then the resource name, <coughs> we're just just a reference name. We had said it is. We can just say EC two underscore demo. That is the name that we're giving our instance. Then inside of this, we have the AMI. So AMI, it's a string. Now we had gone to our, our 
provider launched an instance and we had taken, let me say we create a Red Hat, just that AMI. We can copy that AMI and copy that AMI and paste it, paste it right there. So that's the AMI. And then the other thing that we need is instance type. So once you, you start typing, it is gonna auto complete. So instant type, type, the instant type. Then we had say it is a T2 micro, micro. This is now, this is now our, our instant type, right? So with this, we now have our, our, our resource and provider block set, right? So the first command we need to initialize. So we'll do Terraform, Terraform init. So we will initialize that particular directory. And as usual, it creates for us a dot Terraform, Terraform uh, directory. It has initialized, it has initialized that directory. Then we can run Terraform, Terraform, Validate, right? Validate to check to check the syntax of our, our configuration file. So right now it says configuration is valid, it's success. So if this if it had any error, it will it will give you an error. Then after after that, we say the next the next thing is now we need to run Terraform plan. Now the plan it will create an execution plan for us right it will show us what it is actually what it's actually going to to create now for us to create the prerequisite is we need to ensure that wherever we are creating we have a default vpc because that resource that ec2 instance will need to be created in a certain vpc then the second thing is your ami is region specific as we know. So therefore we have to go to the region where we are provisioning our infrastructure to be able to do it, to get our AMI. Then also thirdly, we need credentials. Now we are we are running it on our, on our windows, on our windows. Now on this windows, on this windows, how are we passing our credentials? Now, telephone, it gives you a list of ways in which you can pass credentials, right? In which you can pass credentials. So one, you can pass what we call static credentials, whereby inside of your provider block, where you have your region, you can pass your access key and secret key, right? You can pass, now you can paste here your access key and your secret key. So you can pass credentials like this. However, this this method is not is not advisable why because you are hard coding you are passing your secrets your password you are passing your access key in plain text because you are pasting them inside of your code so this this method is not advisable it is a risk a vulnerable vulnerable right you are exposing your secrets but you can pass your static credentials like that. The second option is you can use environmental variables, whereby you can set environmental variables for the access key and the secret key like that, right? And even the default region. So that Terraform will, will, will read the environmental variable, then it will pick up the credentials, right? But thirdly, you can also use what we call a profile. When you run, AWS configure, it creates for you a default profile, right? You have a default profile that, so you can either use that, that profile that you've set, or if you if your credentials, you can put your secret key and access key in a file, in a file. And with that file, you can use a shared credential file. So you can pass this option as a shared credential file in, inside of inside of your telephone. So right now let's go to let's go to to our terminal. 
if I go to, to my terminal and I I CD and I CD CD to home CD to home uh, dot AWS right AWS and I LS I'm going to see I have the config file and the credentials file right now if I if I cut credentials if I cut credentials then I will see I have I have this my credentials here so I have the default but I also have have another uh, credentials that that is my name I have another credentials right here so if I don't pass any any credentials then it is going to use this default credentials right but I can also say I'm passing a profile so when I pass a profile this is the name of the profile I can say default and I can say can mark or I can say landmark so this is the profile and this is the 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 Cesky. So now in this region, I can say for my credentials, I want to pass this profile, right? I want to pass the profile and the profile here, I can say the profile is, if I say default, default, if I pass, pass a profile as default, right? Which is a string, I can pass it like that, but because it's default, it is not necessary to put it there because if no other profile has been passed, then it is going to use the default credentials, right? That we configured. So I can leave that profile there like that, or I can, or I can take it out, right? Or I can take it out. So, so now with this, I can CD back, CD back into, I can CD back into Terraform series, CD, CD back, then CD into home. Um, Terraform series. Terraform series, Terraform series. Telephone series. Telephone. Telephone series. Telephone. And then let's go. Let's go. Let's Okay, hold on one second. Let me let me rename this directory. Let me rename this directory. <clears throat> Telephone series. I'm inside of telephone series. Telephone series. I just rename this because it's not it's not allowing me to okay it's not so I'm gonna move I'm gonna move to a phone Telephone series. 
move it to Terraform. Terraform on this service. All right, so I I just renamed renamed my directory to my Terraform because it wasn't it wasn't reading the space between Terraform and series. So I the configuration value again is valid. I've initialized it, initialized. Then now here we now run our plan. So the Terraform plan, it is going now to look through this configuration file and generate for us for us for us a plan. A plan is basically <clears throat> what it's going to do. Now it is going it's telling me there is an error configuring Terraform AWS error validating provider credentials, right? Error <coughs> provider credentials. Now, as you saw yesterday, if you get this error, uh, this particular error, it, it is calling get caller identity, invalid credential token ID. Now we, we need to reset, we need to reset, to reset the token. So, let me go here, let me go here, go here, remember that I uh, gave you guys this command when we were doing the installation, there is this command to be able to reset, to reset your token, right? So you can copy that, that command. Copy. Go back here, and I can run that command. Once I run that command, then I run Terraform plan. So it has reset reset the token, and now here it it's now generating for me for me a plan. Like this is what what it's going to do. It is going Terraform will perform the following actions. It is going to create this EC2 instance, AWS instance, and the name EC2 demo. That's the name I had given it right here. The resource it is that instance. The AMI it is that instance. And then the Amazon resource <coughs> name. It is going to be known after it is created. Right here it is it is just giving you a plan of the things that it will create, all the subnet IDs, user data, if there is any, right? The EBS volume block device. So everything has now been configured. So Terraform has, because of the credentials, it has now communicated with AWS. And these are the things that it's going to, to create for you. And the plan, it is just going to create one resource, zero to change and zero to destroy, right? Now with this, not you did not use the out option to save this plan. So Terraform can't guarantee to take exactly what action if you run Terraform apply now. So with this, so after you are satisfied that this is what you want to create, this is the plan. Then in terms of the workflow, after we run, after we run Terraform, Terraform uh, plan, it gives us the execution plan. And then now we run Terraform apply. So Terraform apply is what is used to apply the changes required to reach the desired state. So desired state of the configuration. So by default, apply scans the current directory for the configuration and applies the changes appropriate. So once you run Terraform apply, this is what is going to create the state file. It is going to create your resources now in, in AWS. Right. So let's go ahead and run run Terraform Terraform apply. So I'll go back to to my server or my terminal. I go back to my terminal. Then I run Terraform Terraform apply. 
Now, before I run, before I run apply, if I go to my my AWS console right here and I go to EC2, I go to EC2. Right here, I only have two servers running. I only have two servers running, right? So let's see what is gonna happen. So if I if I run Terraform apply, it will generate for me for me the plan again. And what with that happen, it creates for me the Terraform now state file, right? State file. So it is creating this this state file saying, okay, it is it is going to 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 manage to enable to open. Okay. It's a read on it. So it is going to manage to manage this 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 state file for me, right? But now here it tells you, do you want to perform these actions? So Terraform will perform the actions described above. Only yes will be accepted. So now you if you you want okay, so you will type yes. And once you type you type yes in that, so it will now start start creating creating the instances error invalid parameter value parameter value the architecture of the specified instant type does not match the architecture server in the AMI some type on the MI that might have matching architectures and try. Okay, so let me see. Let me see if I go back to this. If I go back to launch so two instance, and let's say, oh, I'm supposed to choose this 64 bit x86. I chose this. So it is this, right? If this is a red hat, I'm choosing that, copy, then go back to my, go back to my AMI and just update it. So that is the AMI. So the file is saved, it is saved, and then just run apply. So when the apply is going to generate for you the plan, and then you enter yes. Once you enter yes, <clears throat> you now start creating. It will now start creating the <clears throat> the instance, right? It's now still creating the instance. It is creating the instance for you. It's still creating. Now, once it's, it's still creating, if you go to your, to your AWS console, AWS console, and look at your EC2, EC2, now you see you have, <clears throat> you have a third instance that is just created. And it's created in the in the default. It picked a default uh, security group, right? You have this instance that is now running. It was still initialized. So now it's running. This is the instance ID for ECFF, right? For CEFF. So that is the instance ID. If I go right here, this is the instance ID 094ECFF. This is the instance that Terraform has just created in AWS. Now, this in AWS are called tags. So on this resource, I can add a tag, right? I can add a, I can add a tag on, on my resource. Now, how do I add a tag? So inside of this resource, I can type tag and you see it's it's tags, right? Tags. Now tags is is a map. It is a map because you can put put many tags and a map is a it's a key and value pair. So I can say this name. 
I can just give it, give it, give it a tag as, as just the name and the value. I can say my first, my underscore first underscore EC2. So that is that is the tag that that I've given. I've given my my <clears throat> EC2 instance. So with that. The file is already saved. Now, what I can do is that I can just run apply again. So apply, it is now going to look through the state file, right? It is going to look through through the state file. Once it looks, it looks through your, your state file. This is now the state file has been has been generated. The state file has been generated, so it is going to look through this state file and compare it with, 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 uh, with the resource. This state file is basically managing the resource in AWS. So if I apply, it is going to sense that the EC2 instance that was created it didn't have a tag on, but now I'm requiring a, a tag. Then it is going to modify. It is going to modify that EC2 instant. So it does, it refreshes it, then it compares it. Now here it says one plan to change the tags. This is, this is what the change that is now gonna happen. So it is going to change that. So once I do yes, yes, then it is going now to modify this EC2 instance. Now it has, it has just changed it. It didn't add a resource, it just modified, modified it. Now, if I go on my, my EC2 instance and I refresh right now, then I will see I have my tag, uh, uh, my first EC2 as a tag on my on my EC2 that, that, I, that I just created, right? So this is what, what Terraform can do as in terms of infrastructure as a code. Now, um, I could go on my console and create that EC2 instance. But now I have, I've written it in code format. So this code format, because I've written it like this, this code format is reusable. I can give this code to you and you can run it and you will get the same, same output. You, the, the instance that you create will be exactly the same. So that's why now this code is reusable. And that's why infrastructure as a code is, is very key. So now we've created our first, our first EC2 instance. So once you're done with that, once you're done with that, now the next command uh, in terms of the Terraform workflow, once you apply, apply creates the resources, it makes the changes. But now if you want to destroy, there is this Terraform destroy command. So it is used to destroy Terraform managed infrastructure. This will ask for confirmation before destroying. So now we can run Terraform destroy uh, if we don't, don't need, need our resources anymore. So we can run Terraform, Terraform destroy. Right? But once I run Terraform destroy, <clears throat> once I run Terraform destroy, it is going to refresh the state. Then it is going to generate for me a destruction plan. It is going now to, to, to create for me, saying that Terraform will perform these actions. Now, as you can see, it is also color coded. It is in red. When it shows red, it means it's going to destroy. When it shows green, when it was planning, green, it means it's, it is creating. And green with a plus means it is adding, it is changing. Red with a minus, it means it is destroying. These resources will be destroyed. So it gives you a plan uh, that all this is going to be destroyed. Now, if if you are comfortable, if you are okay, then you just need to type yes. So once you type yes, Terraform will go ahead and start destroying, start destroying, destroying the instance. And now that is the beauty of infrastructure as a code because you can bring up an instance, an instance, then within within a couple of minutes, you can take them down. You can create 20 servers. You can create 20 servers in, in, uh, in AWS 
20 servers, but then within uh, five seconds or within five minutes, you can destroy destroy all the resources. Now, like here, uh, it has finished destroying. So if I go to my to my AWS console right here and I refresh, I see, okay, if I refresh it again, this instance has been terminated, right? So it has been terminated. So the instance is, does no longer exist. So this will still be here, but with time, AWS is gonna gonna take get rid of it. But other this instance has been has been terminated when we run Terraform destroy. So basically, that is the that is the workflow when 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 you think about about using Terraform. Now, uh, my this server. In AWS, it should be, should also be ready. Now, by CD into Terraform projects, came back. So this is the server in AWS. If I LS, LS, I have my EC2 instance, EC2 instance, uh, EC2 instance. Okay, what I can do is let me let me open the code from here. Let me open the code from here. Let's open it quick. So I open the code from here. So now this is my this is what we are working on. This is my my EC2 instance right my ec2 instance and so if i run it from here this server has has a role attached attached to it so i can also run terraform terraform in it in it it's gonna initialize it initialize the backend I think we, which is what we had already done. It has already initialized that. I can put put in a tag. I can put in tags. Tags. And tags is a map. Then I can say name. 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 Plus two. I can say this is a, a dev a dev instance, right? A dev environment. So that is the tag now I've initialized. So I also need to go and change that AMI. As you remember that AMI was I put the wrong AMI. So I can say I want to create an Ubuntu Ubuntu so I can copy this AMI. Copy and I can just update that in my here. Just what am I? Let's get it is auto saved. Then I can validate Terraform. Validate this one just checks for syntax success. Then I can run Terraform plan. Once I run the plan, it is going to, to give me the plan of what, what it's going to do. Then I can run Terraform apply. Once I apply it, it is going to run to run that, and then I need to say yes. Then it is going to start creating this my instance, my demo EC2. So it will create it. Now this instance is in AWS, so it is using a role that I attached. I attached to it, right? So it is using that role as as a credential to 
to create this this particular server right so while while it's still creating if i go to my to my aws and i look at my ec2 console if i look at my ec2 console then i have this server dev that i just created it's initializing now it has just been created created a, a while ago right so once once it has initialized um, i can modify it so i can just use terraform to to modify it i can put more tags to it i can pass more more information in it so uh but once i'm done then i can run terraform terraform destroy destroy i can run terraform destroy it is going to to run a a plan a plan for me and then once i say yes then it is going to start destroying destroying my my instance the instance that, that i just created now if you go back once it destroys it if you go back to to your ec2 and you refresh it now you'll see it's it's shutting down once it, it is shutting down it is still being destroyed and once it shuts down then it will be terminated so terraform is still destroying it destroying it now the instant has been terminated so this is the entire entire workflow when when you think about uh, how you apply terraform or how you use you use terraform in in your environment so basically we have terraform beneath validate plan apply and destroy right now the prerequisite we said you have to ensure that you have a default vpc but as we progress with the course we will see now how we can we can create our resources in our custom vpcs we can create vpcs and and and, and create instances or, or resources in there so now with that said so let's look at uh let's look at uh at uh this project now if i ask you if i ask you to to create a new folder right a new folder or directory um, on your vs code folder called project one and then create a vpc named fast vpc and your cider range right this is the cider range that i'm giving you so all you need to do all you need to do is is first go to your go to your vs code go to your vs code all right here okay i'll just go ahead and delete delete this oh sorry delete delete permanently but i don't need on this I can just delete this terraform because this once you initialize it will download so now inside of this terraform let me create a directory so I'll create a directory called project one so I'll create project project maybe hyphen one project one i've created created that directory and then inside here i'm supposed to create a vpc this is supposed to be the name of the vpc fast vpc so inside of this project right i create a new file so this file i'm calling it vpc okay vpc.tf right is a terraform file uh, so i create a vpc.tf now with that vpc.tf now i can go on my on my on google 
and you can type Terraform, Terraform VPC, like VPC example, right? And then you're looking for a resource. <clears throat> you're just looking for an AWS VPC, VPC example. So a simple VPC example, um, which is a resource. Just Terraform. Terraform VPC resource. VPC resource. We're creating a resource. AWS VPC. This is a resource. This is what you're looking for. It will always start with AWS underscore VPC, and it's a resource that we want to create. So once I open that, it will give you basic usage, an example, right? So I can just copy this, copy this, and do it, and come right here and just paste it, right? I'm creating a resource. It is a VPC, right? And what was the name? I'm told that it's supposed to be called fast VPC. So the VPC name, VPC name right here, I'll have it as fast, fast VPC, fast VPC. And then you are also given, given the side range. This is the side range. So I can copy my side range right here, copy and go back to my CIDR range here or the CIDR block and I can paste it. I can paste it right there. <clears throat> so now this is what is now going to create my, my VPC, right? But again, if I initialize this, it is going to give me an error because, because I don't have any, any provider. So let's see, if I CD, CD into, project cd into project project one if i ls i have that vpc right now if i run terraform terraform init right it is gonna try and and uh, initialize initialize the the backend right but let me see if i run I've initialized it, right? It has seen AWS VPC, so it has downloaded that AWS version. But let me see, if I run Terraform, validate. <clears throat> the configuration is valid. Now let me see if I run Terraform plan, right? So Terraform plan, because I didn't pass any region, it knows that it is in, in, uh, in uh, AWS. But because I didn't pass any region, you see it is saying I need to pass the provider <clears throat> region, the region where AWS operation will take place. And it gives you examples. So now it is asking you enter a value. So here it is allowing me to pass, to pass the region at runtime because I didn't set my provider block, right? But now, because we are learning to write, to write this infrastructure as a code, as a code, therefore, I will, need, I will need to put my provider so that if I give you this code, you shouldn't worry about like, oh, what do I put? Which region do I put, right? So that's why when we set this up, when we set this up, we have to put our, provide a block, right? We have to put our provider block. So with that resource, then I'm gonna put a provider block. I'm gonna put my provider, my provider, right? And the provider is AWS. <clears throat> and the reason that I'm just putting the provider <clears throat> is so that I put my region, right? I put my region, my region, where is my region? 
gonna provision these resources in in US West one, right? US West one. So I wanna create create this VPC in US US West one, right? So uh, I will I just exited out of it. So I will run Terraform Terraform plan again. <clears throat> now the Terraform plan, now you see it's it's not giving me a plan. It is going to create to create my first VPC, right? This is the resource it's going to create a VPC and this is the CIDR block that I was given. That is the CIDR block that I was given. So it is creating that side of block. Now, and then I can just run Terraform, apply, Terraform apply. Once I enter, you can entry, then it is going to ask me if I want to proceed, yes. So once I proceed, it is now creating the first VPC and it has completed. So if I go to my, if I go to my, or AWS console and look at my VPC, look at my VPC for like search, search for VPC. If I look at my VPC, VPCs in that region, And I go to VPC, and then I see that Terraform, Terraform just created this, this VPC, right? It created this, this is the CIDR block that we gave it. But this VPC in AWS, it doesn't have a tag, right? It doesn't have a tag. So if we want a name to appear in AWS, we have to put it as a tag, right? You have to tag your resource. Otherwise, the name that you are passing, the name that you are passing in, in Terraform, this is the local name. This is the name that is going, that is going to, be, to be referenced within Terraform. But if I want uh, this name to appear in, in AWS, then I will need to pass a tag. So I'll put my tags, right? Tags, and I say equal to, then it's a map. Then I'll say, I just want the name, right? And again, I'll put the string. I just say the name, the name of the VPC will be called fast, fast VPC. I can I can give it the name the name like that. Then once once it it is saved, and I run apply, I reapply it again. Now, if I don't want to keep typing yes, yes, you can run up. You can run auto approve. So I can do Terraform up Terraform apply. Terraform apply then dash auto dash approve, right? Dash auto approve. So I'm auto approving, right? So it wouldn't ask me if I want to, if I want to continue. So right here now it is now putting a tag and it's just modifying the instance. It's modifying the VPC. So if I go back to now to my VPC, if I go back to my VPC and I, I look at the the VPCs that I have and I refresh this, now it has been tagged. This is now the name of the VPC that I just created. And this is the CIDR. This is the CIDR block, right? It, it just created it uh, a couple of minutes ago. And this is the CIDR block. So now I just created, created up my first VPC, right, in that. Then, with that said, uh, after I've applied, now if I no longer need the VPC, 
this is the beauty of Terraform is now I can just run Terraform, Terraform destroy, destroy, and I can also auto approve. I can auto approve it. So once I auto approve it, then it is going to, to run that. It is going to run that. It's going to give you a destruction plan. Then it says the resources are destroyed. So if I go back to my my console and I refresh it, so you see my VPC is gone. My first VPC is gone. It has been destroyed. So Terraform has just destroyed and and wipe it out, right? So so with this, now we see that. When you look at the command basics, command basics, we, you have more information here you can read. I'll give you all this notes. You can read like what, when you go through the command basic, like what each command does, basically initialize, validate, uh, plan, plan, apply. There's just more resources on what it does. We also have equally have some other commands like refresh, import, taint, format. So it gives you, more, more information and also if you go onto your onto your 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 console where you've where basically where you've installed your terraform your terraform and and you just run you just run your terraform terraform so it is going to give you the commands and what each command does so but it tells you the main command these are the main command we've been looking at the main command this is like what the workflow init validate plan apply destroy but we also have other commands that you can equally use right so if you want to see a list of, of terraform commands then just type terraform in your environment and you can read read about all these all these commands like what each one does right but in terms of the workflow then you have to know these main commands and what each 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 command does right what each command command does then uh configuration files we said we will be creating files that end with a dot tf so i encourage you to 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 practice i encourage you to go into your vs code set it up set it up in two different environments just set it up and try and and um, and practice write different resources go go on 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 google and just search for any resource in AWS that you want to create start with basic things like ec2 instances vpc s3 buckets and just see how the configuration is written but as as we will go further what i will do is that because i'm running this Terraform on my remote environment, right? So that means that my server in AWS will have to, 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 to run, right? Now for the cost factor, because I can equally run Terraform from my Windows environment. So what I will do going forward, I will use my Windows platform, right? But this uh, uh, AWS or, or remote environment, I just wanted to demonstrate and show you that you can equally install Terraform on, on a server in AWS and run it remotely from there, okay? So by going forward, I will be using my, my Windows platform where all my configuration files are here. I'm just using profile to, to, to be able to create resources. So try that. And again, on, on your VS Code, on your VS Code, uh, once, once you, you you create, once you create a file or directory, the reason why we installed a plugin is the plugin will, will help you to autocomplete. So like example, if I want to create a resource, once you start typing resource, it will give you suggestions. So like the, this is a block resource. Once you click on block, then it gives you that I need to fill in what kind of resource type, the resource type that I need to have. So you can use your arrow keys and scroll down. 
in terms of what, what resource do you want to create? Let's say I want to create a, an, an uh, AWS, they will all start with AWS. <clears throat> so I can say I want to create an AWS, um, AWS, uh, let me go to something that is familiar, familiar, AWS instance. AWS instance. So I can click enter. Then I can give it any name. This is just a name that will be local to reference it, right? Because if I'm creating like five instances in Terraform, they are all AWS instance, AWS instance. So I need to find a way to differentiate them. So like now I give it names that are unique. So that is easy to demo. I can give this one as my any name. So my my EC2. It doesn't matter. Right. Then with that, now once you come inside this block body, now like what do you need to put in inside this resource? So now you click, you click control space, right? On your keyboard, click control and the space bar. Then it will show you like what you need to, to put in. So if you scroll down like AMI. AMI, right here it is saying it is optional. It's a string, right? But it's optional if we are using, if because you can you can use a template, right? You can use a template. But when you are just doing for an AWS instance, it is required, right? It is it is required. So you look at what is required, right? Then it tells you it's a string. So then you can you can select your AMI. You can put your AMI ID, AMI ID there, and then enter, then click control space, then search for any other thing that is required, right? All these are optional, optional. We know that instant type, instant type is, is required, right? So we know that instant type is required. But now, so I'm looking for what, what is required instant type, right? AWS instant, it is required, right? Instant type for AWS instant. So I can put instant type, then I can say t2.medium, something like that. Then, then you can control space. So once you control space, you can search for any other thing that you want to put there. But also there, there, there are other things that are optional. Maybe I want to put a profile, I want to put uh, shutdown behavior. So now all these are configuring. Maybe I want to attach a key so that I log into this instance. So I can pass a key name. So I can pass a key name and that key name will be, I give it a string like automation, automation key, right? That is the name of the key that I'm associating with that. So now you can use, you can use the autocomplete uh, uh, feature on this to be able to, to, to create your resources, to create your resources by using the extension because everything will now autocomplete, autocomplete for you. So just take time and, and, uh, and practice, go through this. And once you're done with that, uh, once you know how to set up your environment and you know the basic workflow, then now during the next the next video, during the next series, now we will now come and look at now the language syntax. Like now, how do we write Terraform configuration file? Like what is the syntax? How are we supposed to write it? What do we need to, what format do we need to consider? when we are putting in. So with that said, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you in the next video, bye.